do you think you all did well? Uh, I mean, I, I thought you know, I thought I thought the throw game was was pretty good. I think we ended up being like middle of the pack in the, in the conference and everything like that. As far as passing the ball, that's what I mean by throw game. I'm sorry. And so, um, you know, a lot of the stuff concept wise, I thought quarterbacks and everybody kind of kind of knew knew a bunch of stuff right there. Uh, knew what to do and kind of what we were trying to get done in that in that aspect. But um, you know, and then there were some different things in the run game that 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 I thought we did well too. You know, what I mean, you know, obviously everything could could need could need tweaks. And even the stuff that we do now, I'm sure is going to need some too. So, um, you know, just right, really trying to find out exactly what we can do well with this group. Because I think uh, each each new year, uh, I mean, you got a brand new team, you got new pieces, and you got you know you got players that you know that have gotten better from last year. But you getting you get some healthy guys back, and you got to kind of work it all in. So I think that's the biggest thing is just fitting all the pieces in the right place. How much of an advantage is it to have a bunch of guys coming back that played a lot of significant snaps? I, I think you know the biggest the biggest thing that helps people that help that helps players you know period is game experience you know what i mean so i think that's invaluable period so i mean just regardless of the system and regardless of kind of what you're keeping or what you're changing you know players that know what it takes in order to go out there and play well on saturdays is is the big you know it helps just because they know how how, how what it takes to prepare to get to that point. And so uh, those guys, you know, being able to come out here and being able to kind of pay attention to exactly how you want things done and, 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 and asking the right questions on why you want it, you, why you may want it like this and things like that, that's, that's the valuable stuff. Ryan, you talked about some of the, the familiarity from last year to this year, but what's the biggest difference you think in your mind? Um, I think, that, like I said, I think it's going to be a bunch of differences when it comes to, you know, different sets that we might be in and, or, or, you know what I mean, different things we might do, uh, you know, both passing the ball and running the ball. You know what I mean? I, but I think that changes from year to year anyway. Uh, like I said, just because each, each team you get new pieces. So, um, you know what I mean, just what we're going to ask certain guys to do might look a little bit different. Uh, you know, trying to, you know what I mean, you know, basically how we, how we could try to scheme up things to get certain matchups at one position or another, that might look, look a little bit different. So um, just trying to put it all together. But, you know, right now everybody's excited, so we'll see how we'll see how it all fits. Alex Joyner came in with a lot of hype, uh, you know, on him. He's got a lot of stats in high school. Right. Would you guys consider designing a special package for him, or is it just, you know, kind of let him get into college first? Yeah, and this is one practice. You know, we've only had one practice with the guy. And so, I mean, it's, uh, obviously you, you want to see a lot on what he can and can't handle. You know, right now he's taking in a lot. You know, right now, I mean, this is his first college practice. Uh, so, I mean, he has, it's, a lot to see, it's a lot left to see on what he can and can't do. Did Jake progress to the level that you guys wanted him to last year? Were there more things that he could do that you could probably work on with him this year? I mean, everybody's got room for improvement, you know. Um, but did he progress from, from one year to the next? Uh, absolutely. Um, and then we're going to ask him to progress a lot more from last year to uh, to this season. And then, you know what I mean, hopefully he stays around and has a good enough season where, where we have a choice. But hopefully he stays around and, and progresses, and, you know, go, going into the next year. But, um I mean, I think you could, you could ask the same thing for you know all the players that's here. But you know, I mean, we are we are proud with kind of how he has progressed. Um, and then you know, we just got we got to keep him moving in that direction going into this season as well. How right. Work in relationship with Dan Warner, Ben. That's, that's been great. It's been great. I think, man, just him and you know, he's he's just. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, that knows what it takes to, to, to help gel the staff. Um, you know, obviously has a bunch of football knowledge, has a bunch of experience, um, and just a good guy. So, I mean, you know, it, it's, he, he's been, it's been great, not just as an offensive staff guy, but just as a complete staff guy. I mean, it's been, it's been great. Is there something guys come... specific concept-wise that you picked his brain about? That he uh, I think everybody, you know, I think, I think everybody. You know, the, the, the one thing that, you know, we both kind of started out, and, and I say started out, but we both kind of learned offensive football from the old, school eye formation you know what I mean and kind of had to grow from there on both ends and so our evolution has kind of been been really really similar you know what I mean and it's taking different paths you know both you know both but uh, on both sides but our evolution has been real similar so just to see and and we can kind of relate to how you know how things originated you know in both my ideas his ideas or whoever else's ideas you know and so uh, but you know not just him but you know Wolf you know I mean, he's a great football mind has a bunch of good stuff you know Pat Washington has been around a bunch of good ball you know Bobby Bentley's a great 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 coach so I mean you know I think we have a good collection of people who can give you ideas and 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 put their and put their experience to use when it comes to building things or tweaking things or changing things. Brian, three guys coming back in the backfield. How do you manage that workload? 
Well, I mean, I haven't been through a season where you hadn't need more than three running backs. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, the thing is, I mean, you, you, if you have three good, adequate ones, then you're probably going to use all three throughout the course of the year. Um, you know, especially, especially with running the ball and being balanced, you're going to you're going to have to do that. So, in order to keep guys healthy, keep guys fresh, and be able to make it all year long, being able to run the football, I think you're going to use you're going to use all three, if not more. Brian, how young were you when you first became aware of your dad's legacy at Georgia, and, and how often do you still talk oh, to him about football? Man. Well, you know, I still I talk to him, you know, three, four times a week. So we still talk a bunch. Uh, obviously, man, I tell people all the time he's my hero. So, um, but it was fairly early when I learned of kind of you know the, the the route that he took and everything that he did over there over there when he went to school. And so um, it was fairly early. Now to remember how exactly how old I, I don't know. It was elementary. It was elementary age ish is what I'm thinking. What are some of the things you guys have talked about lately? Uh, just the most of the time we really talk is barely about football. You know, it's normally about just. Catching up, you know, seeing what my mom's doing, you know, what I mean, how the plants are doing over there at the house, you know, what I mean, <laughs> stuff like that. So, but it's 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 very it's very rarely about football. But when it, when it is, it's kind of, you know, it's we're we're around the football setting, so we're watching a game or something like that. But you know, most of the time it's just you know dad and son talking. Brian, for a spring practice for you as the offensive coordinator here, what's the biggest difference from last year at the same time? Uh, obviously, you, you, you're looking at a lot more, um, but. You know, as far as far as as far as team wise and goal wise and everything else, I mean, I think everybody's excited. Now, you know, all first days are really really similar. You know, guys are out there moving fast, not always in the right direction, but they're moving fast and they're trying hard. And just because everybody's kind of fresh and ready to go, and so um, you know, we're at the first install. Um, so guys are trying to make sure that we get everything down as far as that goes, and and so uh, I mean you know it, it looked like a spring practice, but I, I I have been really really pleased with the guys uh, being excited about what we're doing and going in there and and, and kind of, and trying to get it right. Your goal is to have the whole install done by the end of spring. Uh yeah, I mean I think that's everybody's that's that's always the goal, you know. So we'll kind of we'll kind of do it and we'll kind of implement it, you know, periodically as far as when we're going to install. But you know, by the end of it, is to have the majority of what we're going to do or what we think we're going to do, uh, for sure, and by the spring. How much what has your workload changed since becoming full time? Uh, well, uh, it's it's changed, it's changed, um, you know. But the biggest thing is just organizational wise, making sure everybody's on the same page when it comes to, you know, from me to. You know all the scout team guys. You know what I'm saying, and so just making sure that everybody's on the same page and that we're working efficient and that we're all working in the right direction. So, um, you know, that's the biggest thing that's changed. You know, more so than just the actual scheme and part and everything else. Because when you talk to foot, the football stuff is, is the football stuff. You know, and so now it's just making sure that that we're doing it right and making sure that you know everything, everybody's in the right place. Have you reached out to any people that you look up to to, you know, ask about how to organize that yeah, time? I mean, you know, just and more, more so actually when when I got put in that position, you know, for the bowl game. But I mean, you know, reach out to all the all the people that you have good relationships with that you know have kind of been in your shoes, um, you know. But the big, the one thing that I did find out that there's really nothing that you. There's good advice. Don't get me wrong, but there's not there's not much that can be said or much that can be done until you get put in that position to have to live through it, you know. Um, and so, you know, just going at, going out there and just kind of having to do it is the best teacher that I think I've had for sure. You know, what I mean, in all the different situations that I've kind of get had to get put into. As you, the co-offensive coordinator the last two seasons, were there any things that you did during that time that have helped made this transition a little smoother? For you? Um, I think just knowing, just knowing kind of everything and knowing all the pieces is, is, has been the biggest thing. You know, being here is, has been the biggest help. Um, be it one because you know, you know what the guys know. And so, I mean, what you and, and you know, so that at least gives you a starting point of okay, okay, all right. Well, we got to start here. It, whether we're going to keep it or change it, this is kind of where we're starting. And so, and kind of going from there, that's been the biggest help. You know what I mean? Instead of coming in and kind of assuming everything from ground zero, and you know, you could you can get in kind of wasting time into putting in stuff that 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 you could already had in there and just built upon, you know, built upon. So, um, you know, that's been the biggest help more so than anything else. You mentioned at your introduction that you want to lead the country in effort, toughness, and discipline. Mm -hmm. How has the process been like with those three categories off the field? I think they've been good, you know. So, right, I mean, the biggest thing about those, they're as simple as they're stated. I mean, they're, they're very hard to do. Um, and and, I, and the reason why I say they're hard to do is because you got to be at your very, very best in those areas every single day. 
And so just stringing all the days together, you know, young and old, older guys kind of get a little bit better. But the younger guys, that's what I tell people, you know, even in recruiting, I mean, you know, playing that, playing early is one of the hardest things that you've ever done in your life just because you got to be good so long, you know, so consistently. You know, day after day after day after day, and you know, what I mean, and a lot of people aren't used to that, and so just being held to a high standard of, hey, man, this is kind of how we're going to do it, is, is 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 the biggest thing that everybody has to kind of grasp and kind of go from there. But the guy's been doing a great job of it. Brian, looking back at the Outback Bowl, Javon gets the fumble, and you guys take the deep shot right after. Did you know right away that's the play that we're that that you want? Yeah, well, you know, we wanted to be aggressive. Um, we wanted to be aggressive, and so that that's the last thing I want to do is just kind of sit back there and kind of just get teed off on. You know what I'm saying? And so, you know, I mean, the bottom line is is we want to be aggressive, and we want to we want to be balanced and be aggressive. You know, what I mean, and I think that's the same. That's the same motto that every offensive coach is going is going to want to have, you know. But you know, that's it's, it's more than just talking about it. You got to go out there and you got to call the shots and you got you know good stuff's got to happen. So that's the first thing that you called on that. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was, we we were going we were going to take a shot after that, you know after when that happened. We we're going to try to throw it in the end zone. As far as tempo is concerned, do you have a certain number of plays? Like, have you can you quantify like how many plays you want to run per game, or is it as many as play? possible? You know, as many as possible. I, you know, I, I tell you know I tell people this. As far as the exact number, I don't know. I do, I do want to average. I, I want to be up there in the average of as far as number of plays you know in the conference you know as we can. Uh, just. It's, it's really simple, you know what I mean? The more plays you run, the more opportunities you get for yards and points. I mean, you just get – I mean, the more plays, you just get more at-bats. And so um, and so that's that, that's that's the biggest thing. But, you know, the one thing you don't want to do is just tempo-wise or anything-wise, just kind of get mundane to where this is kind of always what you're doing. To be able to kind of mix tempos, go in and out of, you know, fast or, you know what I mean, you know, even whether you want to huddle or, it, you know, whether you want to call stuff at the line of scrimmage and, you know, whatever. But the bottom line is you want to be able to mix – you want to mix that up up to to keep people on their toes as good as you can. Yeah, uh, uh, no, no question. You know what I mean. Obviously, man. Hope and hopefully we up we are up enough where we got to pull back the reins. But if not, man, we're just gonna kind of we're gonna try to keep you know we're gonna try to keep snapping the ball and keep getting yards and keep getting points. That's the plan. Brian, what do you want to carry in to take away from you know his time with Jake Bentley that he sure. has right now? Um, the one thing that Jake does that I think not just to carry on but everybody can do is just how much he pours into the game. You know, he, he takes it extremely serious. He knows he's a student athlete. Obviously, man, he does a good job with his grades and academics and acting right and all that other stuff there. But but just being a student of the game, knowing exactly why you want to do something uh, or exactly what you're thinking when you're call when we're calling this play. And um, just, just you know, and you know if he messes up, knows it, it can come off and then explain exactly what he's doing. Well, Coach, I thought it was this, 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 and this. You know what I mean? And so, you know, being able to communicate that because he knows enough about what's going on. And so – um, not just going out there and just kind of just winging it, you know what I mean? Which that's that's a bad feeling if your quarterback's out there doing that. What do you want to see differently in the different in the offensive line this year as opposed to last year? Uh, one thing that helped would just be consistency. Um, but the bottom line is, man, you got to be able to. You, we we the game is one lost up there. I mean, I think that's easy to say. And so to go up there and, and be and be able to be able to run the ball, uh, you know, when, when we want to run the ball. Uh, and then obviously a lot of it has to do with the with, with how we structure stuff to stay balanced and everything like that. But um, the biggest thing, man, I thought we took a good, I thought we took a big jump even from the, from two seasons ago until last season, just with how, how much the sacks dropped and everything else like that. But I think we almost cut them in half. Um, I think we did cut them in half, but um, and I mean, I, I don't know, somewhere rough. Or in Somewhere close to that, but um, but just being able just being able to uh, control the line of scrimmage enough where we can stay balanced. Were you know? able to surmise to definitely to to uh, be better in the run game? The what does the offensive line have to do better to be better in the run? Well, game? I think that's that's you know being good in the run game has a has a lot to do with a lot more than just the offensive line. Obviously, they're they're a part of they're big they're a big piece of the pie uh, when it comes to that. But it has a lot to do with you know with how you structure plays, um, with with you know I mean being able to run, being able to throw the ball out of run sets, being able to stay balanced where people don't know exactly what you're doing every time you're run, you're lining up like this and everything else. And then you got to be able to have the ability to get too good. To get two positive plays, you know what I'm saying. So what I'm saying is, is, is you know, if we're lined up like this and we're running the ball over there to the right, and they got a million people over there, then we got to have a way to run it over here to where we where we got numbers at. You know what I mean? And that a lot of that has to do with, you know, what I mean, with how everything is structured as well. So, uh, and I, I think you know, what I mean, the one thing we just got to do a good job is, is is structuring stuff in the right way to where we, you know, not not every play.
play is a great play, but we don't have any wasted plays in the run game. You know what I'm saying? And so that's 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 one of the biggest thing. And then obviously, man, just being able to being able to have have mechanisms to if they do overload you, then then now you got one on ones on the outside. Now hopefully, you know we we can make enough plays on the outside where people feel don't feel comfortable enough and leaving your man to man up out there with Brian or Debo and, and guys like that. But I mean, you got to be able to take advantage of both kind of what they give you. In terms of early enrollees, how much can you learn from their game through winter workouts and spring ball and how they can help you? I think, uh, I think it's good. You know, the one thing about the early enrollees is those guys, it's like getting a red shirt without a red shirt. You know what I mean? You, you, those guys come in, they get an entire off season. They get an entire spring practice, and they get the summertime, when they, which, which, which is when they normally would come in. So those guys come, and they're part of the team. You know what I mean? They've been through practice. They know exactly what your what your expectations are. They know, you know how, how you know how things run. You know, and and they can kind of go in, and it's a lot smoother for those guys. That, you know, when it comes to transitioning. So, um, but you learn a lot more throughout those guys. You know, the more they get comfortable. So right now, they still don't know what side's up and down right now. You know what I mean? Like I said, I mean it's just the first just the first practice that that those guys that those guys have taken snaps. But I tell you what, man, those guys have learned it really well. You know what I mean? You know, in their time here as far as what to do and, you know, how to do it. Now now it's time to go out there and practice it and see, you know, who's good at playing football right now. Brian, how do you manage, you know, Debo's time between obviously being one of the best receivers on this roster to, you know, coming off of the injury and what have you seen from him? Uh, I, th- I think you see him kind of work work his way back in it. The one, the, the biggest blessing that, that we're doing that we that we have is having him out there during spring practice. And so, you know, I think there's kind of, you know, anytime you have, you know, severe injuries, you know, and so, I mean, I think there's stages that people kind of go through. I mean, you know, they got the actual healing stage where they get better physically. And then now you got the whole mental part of it, whereas there, there's no, no matter who it is, there's still a mental block to it. So now those guys got to work through being out there with cutting on it and with guys pulling on them and, you know, guys diving out down, down there at your ankle. And you got to go out there and be able to play through all that stuff. So, you know, I think having him during spring, it, it, it moves him through those stages where we're not having to deal with that in the fall. And so, um, and so which, which is good, but he was out there today like, Nothing's happened, so I mean, I, you know, so we'll see, you know what I mean? But, he, you know, he, he's good today, and like I said, today was the first day for him, and right now we're keeping him non-contact until a little bit later on in the spring. I think that's the plan, so, um, but right now he's out there doing it and everything else. How big of a challenge is it to replace what Hayden was able to do for you? Uh, I don't think you can ever replace a Hayden Hurst, you know what I mean? I mean, the guy, guy as talented as he is, but um, you, you go and you try, and like I said, man, that's that, that's kind of what we're talking about, just seeing who all fits in, 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 in what we got right here. So, you know, the biggest thing last year was that, you know, Hayden obviously gave, you know, having him on the field gave us a good chance to be successful, you know what I mean? And so, you know, you just don't want to take put another guy in his position, you know, if he's not the best guy or doesn't give you the best chance to be successful as an offense. So now we're trying to figure out what personnel groups give you the best chance to be successful, what, you know, what people right there. And, you know, if we're doing or, or if it's in the personnel that he would have been in there, what two dudes might make up or one guy could kind of take pick up the slack on kind of where he left off at. But as far as the type of player and ability, I don't think he'll ever replace a guy like that. And I know, you know, actually this weekend he's going to go out there and he's going to arm again. So, I mean, just like he's been doing ever since he's been here. As, as, a, as, as a new coordinator trying to fix up a run game, just how valuable is, is having a guy like Debo who, who can sort of add different elements like that? Sure. I think um, – you know, good players. Good players make it easier. You know, on coaches, that's just kind of how coaching goes. And so, um, you know, but you know, definitely his flexibility, being able to do different things with him, you know, that that definitely gives us an advantage. But the biggest thing is, is staying balanced. I think you know what I mean. The, the most balanced teams are the guys that 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 are ten, that tend to be the better on offense. Can you walk us through your plan process of calling plays? Uh, as far as. First and ten, you're getting First and ten. other people, you're going to script plays. Oh, well, no. I think, you know, I mean, I think you go off of the game plan. You know what I mean? You go off the game plan. And, you know, and a lot of that's tendency based on what you, on what you see out there, you know, on the defense. So, if the defense is, you know, 80 to 90 percent this on first and second downs, then you call in stuff that can beat that 80 to 90 percent of the time that gives you a chance. You know what I'm saying? And so, um, but, you know, and obviously that'll change from week to week to week. And so, I mean, on, on early downs, if – 
if we could take advantage of throwing the ball on early downs, and that's that'll be what we do. If we take advantage of running the ball on early downs that particular week, then that's 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 what we're going to do. So, I mean, uh, but you know, either way it goes, our plan, like I said, to be balanced and to try to stay aggressive and, and make sure that we're in attack mode as much as possible. With today being that, do you get input from other assistants? I think the most of the inputs, no, most of the inputs get put in before the, you know, what I mean, during the game plan process. You know, and I think, you know, too much talking and everything like that at that moment when you're trying to call plays is just clutter. You know what I mean? If you if you got three people yelling different plays at you and you're trying to think of what you're going to call, I think that would be a little tough for me. I ain't just mind, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, but but we'll definitely uh, – I mean, I think that that's where all the input stuff gets put in the most at is during the game plan process. And you get to get, get a chance to kind of talk through a bunch of the ideas and everything like that. And, and that way it makes it, e it makes it a lot easier to adjust and say, okay, all right, well, this this is what we thought, but this is what they're doing. So now this should work, um, and 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 so it kind of makes it easier to kind of talk and everything and adjust from there. You know? Today being the first day, is the installation process five plays the first day, ten the second day, or do you give them the whole playbook at once? No, I don't think you can give them the whole playbook. You kind of break it up in in the segments, and you kind of have a theme, and then you kind of go and so you know if this if, you know if this, we want to get we want to work on these types of runs this day then. Those are those runs that we put in that day. Then you put the auxiliary stuff off of it. Then the then the pass game to kind of that's off of those sets and things like that. You know what I mean? And a lot of us you got to work with the defense, so you don't want to call play. I mean, you know, if, if you're running a bunch of stuff that you're going to run versus single high versus single high coverage, and they put in too high, then I mean, that's going to be a bad day of practice. You know what I'm saying? And so you got to be you got to be in cahoots with them and and making sure that you know you're going to run stuff that they'll see versus those coverages, and you know, and vice versa. So a lot of it's putting that stuff in together. Um, you know, when it comes to installation, but you know, it's 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 more theme based. But you got to break it up. I don't think you can throw everything at them and be able to rep it. You know what I mean? Just being, I mean, you want to be able to practice what you're putting in. So, you know what I mean? You got to be able to do that. And all we get is all we get as far as time wise. How, how different do Shai and Ultra look from the guys who started last season? Oh, I mean, I think this, uh, they, they, they look a lot better. You know, they look, they, they know, like I said, I man, you got a guy, that's, you got guys that kind of know the deal now. You know, I mean, those guys know how to practice. They know exactly what to expect. They know, they know what to do and what not to do. And I think that helps the most. I think it doesn't. You know, the only thing I talk with coach a little bit more about is just organizationally what what we're doing and and kind and stuff like that. Um, you know, but it, it hasn't changed tremendously. It re, it really hasn't. You know, we kind of like I said, we got a we got a great staff. We got a great offensive staff. That I mean, it's it's easy to communicate with those guys. So, um, you know, that makes it easy. Was there anything about actually calling the plays in the bowl game that? Surprised you or just stood out? Well, no, it was different. You know, it was different from for me being upstairs. I had I've never I had never been upstairs up until that point, and so um, just you know, just being up there, you got a chance to see it a lot a lot better. You, I mean, everything was a little more clear, and you know, it was just kind of you could see everything, and you know, it was it was calm, not calmer. You know, I'll say that it was a little more calm. It's not much going on where you can go ahead and go up there and and can kind of process things a little bit faster and, and see things. So that was the biggest difference from there. But you know, calling plays, it wasn't real different from what, from what I was doing out here at practice. You know what I'm saying? You call what thing works. You know what I'm saying? That's just how it goes. You know, and hoping they do. Two more. Ask, two more. Do you, as wide receivers coach, ask of your group for the spring? Uh, just, I mean, you know, those, those same expectations that that I put out there for the offense are the same ones that I put out there, uh, you know, positionally. And so, you know, the one thing is, like I said, man, it was, you know, we we you learn what to do, know what to do, and how to do it. I mean, that's that's a big thing. Uh, you're gonna play extremely hard, and then we're gonna make plays. You know, I mean, that's those. So those are the expectations. Those are the goals. Everyone's got. I don't have ten rules. It's those three. You know, and and so that's what we're gonna go out there and try to try to do those. And so, um, I mean, it's clear and easy to see when you're not doing it and it's clear and easy to see when you when you are and so but those are the goals and we got to develop some depth we really do um you know we, we I mean I, what, what I don't want is a big drop off from my first group to my second group to my third group you know what I mean especially if you're going to play you know if you plan on playing more guys and keeping guys healthy and keeping guys fresh so we have we have to develop some depth and that's going out there and being consistent in those three areas can you kind of break down the, the recruits that you signed in, in this class and what you like about Ooh, them? Oh, uh, man, I got I to gotta look back. I moved <laughs> on, man. I moved on to the next class already. Um, you know, but I'll say this. We're excited about all those guys. Other than the guys that's on campus, um, 
I think offensively, the only guys that are not that are not here are the two receivers, Taquan Johnson, Josh Van, and then the one lineman, uh, Dylan Wong. And so, uh, and obviously, we're extremely we're extremely excited about those three guys, man. All those, all three of those guys are our type of kids. Um, but and you know, they're, they're they got the talent level, and then they and then they're 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 the right, like I said, they're, they're the right type of kids, man. They come in and they're, you know, they they're hardworking, um, you know, humble. They love ball, and then uh, and, and and they look to come in there and try to make a try to make an impact as soon as they step on campus. They're, you know, they don't have the mentality that I'm going to sit back and wait till so and so leaves or. You know, wait two or three years. I mean, I, I don't want to recruit. I tell guys I don't recruit backups. You know I mean, I don't. I don't recruit anybody to come in here and back anybody up. You know what I mean? Now, how it works out when you get here, yeah, you guys duke that out on the practice field. But, I mean, I'm not bringing anybody in here in here to back up or just sign guys to to develop depth. No, man, we're bringing in guys that I feel like can be starters and, you know what I mean, and got to go from there. Can you talk about Josh Van's skill set? Yeah, Josh, you know, Josh, you know, Josh has one of those – I mean, he's, he, he's one of those guys that – He's longer than he is, you know, he's longer than his size shows off. You know what I mean? Really long arms, really big hands, has great ball skills, really good body control. Um, you know, he has the quickness and the speed to kind of to kind of go with it. Um, so we're excited about his skill, you know, get, getting his skill set here. Obviously, he's got to learn what to do and learn how to do it and get in, and, and learn how to practice to, to kind of do that. But the biggest thing about Josh is he comes, one, he loves football. But two, you know, he, Dylan, just like Aaron Sterling and, and, and those other guys, they come from a high school team where the high school coach, you know, he gets on them and, and those guys know how to practice. They know how to practice. They're going to be on the team. They're team first guys. Um, and that, that has all to do with the program that they come out of too. So I'm excited about those guys. All right, we're going to let them go. Thank you, Thank you guys. Appreciate it.